another day, another story. Laden with weapons and gear, Petty Officer Marcus Luttrell grasped the rope dangling from the rear of the Kynok transport helicopter and descended into the moonless night. Twenty feet down, his boots touched ground in the remote mountains of northeastern Afghanistan near the Pakistani border. As the roar of the helicopter faded to silence, Luttrell and three other Navy SEALs, Lt. Michael Murphy and Petty Officers Danny Dietz and Matt Axelson, found themselves alone in the pitch darkness of a desolate war zone. Lone Survivor refers to a memoir written by Marcus Luttrell, a former United States Navy SEAL. Welcome to Tabo Eminent Channel. The book, titled Lone Survivor, the eyewitness account of Operation Red Wing and the Lost Heroes of SEAL Team 10, was co-authored with Patrick Robinson and published in 2007. The memoir recounts the harrowing true story of Operation Red Wings, a mission during the war in Afghanistan. In June 2005, a team of four Navy SEALs, including Marcus Luttrell, embarked on a mission to capture or kill a high-ranking Taliban leader in the mountains of Afghanistan. The team encountered a group of goat herders, and after much deliberation, the SEALs made the decision to release them adhering to rules of engagement. Unfortunately, this decision had grave consequences, as the herders alerted the Taliban to the SEAL's presence. As a result, the SEAL team found themselves in a fierce firefight against a much larger Taliban force. The mission ultimately resulted in the deaths of three of the four SEALs, leaving Marcus Luttrell as the lone survivor. The book details the intense battle, the loss of his comrades, and Luttrell's subsequent struggle for survival in the harsh Afghan terrain. Lone Survivor not only provides a gripping account of the events but also explores themes of courage, sacrifice, and the bonds among military personnel. The memoir was later adapted into a film with the same title, released in 2013, starring Mark Wahlberg as Marcus Luttrell. The lead foreman team was searching for Ahmad Shah, a militia leader aligned with the Taliban, as part of a mission dubbed Operation Red Wings. Soaked by a cold rain, the quartet hiked for hours through the darkness as they struggled to keep their footings on the steep mountain ridges. After the sun dawned on June 28, 2005, nearly four years into the war in Afghanistan, the mud-caked seals burrowed themselves behind rocks logs and tree stumps on an outcrop overlooking Shah's suspected location. The 29-year-old Luttrell, a sniper and team medic, concealed himself under a fell tree when he suddenly heard soft footsteps. Looking up, he saw a turbaned man carrying an axe. The seals had been discovered. Not by enemy forces, however, but a local goat herder. Within moments, Nearly 100 goats with bells around their necks came jingling over the mountainside with another herder and a teenage boy. The surprise presented the seals with several options, none of them good. Killing unarmed non-combatants would violate acceptable rules of engagement and also likely result in a court-martial. If the seals tied up the three and left them behind, they still faced the problem of what to do with a bleating herd without raising suspicions. Dietz, who was in charge of communications, tried to radio headquarters for instructions but could not connect. Left to make their own decision, the unit released the unarmed men, knowing it was very possible that the herders would inform the Taliban forces. It was a decision Latrell knew could sign a death warrant. With their mission compromised, the SEALs tried to move to a defensive position, but barely an hour later, Dozens of Shah's forces emerged over a ridgeline. An avalanche of AK-47 fire, rocket-propelled grenades and mortars cascaded down the mountain. The terrain proved just as vicious as the enemy. As the Taliban fighters advanced, the seals scrambled, fell and jumped hundreds of feet down the mountain. One fall shattered three of Luttrell's vertebrae. Dietz was shot multiple times during the firefight, and although his right thumb had been blown off in the battle, he continued to shoot at the enemy to protect his unit. As Luttrell hooked his arms underneath the shoulders of his badly wounded comrade to drag him down the slope, 
a bullet hit Dietz in the back of his head. He died in Luttrell's arms. The badly wounded Murphy knew their best chance at survival was to call in reinforcements. Without a workable radio connection, the team leader cast his personal safety aside and moved to a completely exposed position, the only location where he could get a signal on his satellite phone. As Murphy phoned for backup, a bullet ripped through his back. The lieutenant managed to complete his call and even keep up the fight, but he could not survive. Luttrell holed up with Axelson, who had sustained a terrible head wound, when a rocket-propelled grenade blasted the two apart. Luttrell never saw Axelson again. Luttrell miraculously survived the blast and managed to elude capture by the time reinforcements arrived. Alerted by Murphy's call, two Kinook helicopters carrying Special Operations Forces rushed to the area of the firefight, but as one of the aircraft hovered to discharge its troops, a rocket-propelled grenade shot it out of the sky. The eight SEALs and eight Army Night Stalkers aboard all died. By the time the sun set on the disastrous day, 19 Americans were dead. Luttrell was presumed to have been a 20th victim, but in spite of bullet wounds, a broken back and rocks and shrapnel protruding from his legs, the SEAL survived. Unaware of the tragedy that befell the rescue operation, Luttrell crawled seven miles through the mountains. In spite of his wounds, he killed chasing Taliban with his rifle and grenades as he continued to evade capture. As the sun blazed down, the thirsty Luttrell licked the sweat off his arms until he found a waterfall. As he sipped its cool waters, he suddenly found himself surrounded once again by a band of local men. These men, however, proved to be more friend than foe. One of the men, Mohammad Gulab, assured Luttrell they were not Taliban, and he and three others carried the wounded warrior back to their village of Sabre. Bound by a tribal code of honor known as Pashtun Wali, Gulab gave Luttrell food, water and shelter. Although the Taliban encircled the village and threatened his family and neighbors if he didn't turn over the American, Gulab refused. For four days, Luttrell was shuttled among houses and even into a cave to prevent his capture. Finally, Gulab's father traveled to a marine outpost with a note from Luttrell. The military launched a large combat search and rescue operation with warplanes and ground forces that attacked the Taliban fighters and brought home their missing man. As Gulab helped the limping seal to a waiting helicopter, an Air Force pararescueman held out his outstretched arm to Luttrell and said, Welcome home, brother. For his actions, Luttrell received a Navy Cross in a 2006 White House ceremony, and Axelson and Dietz received the same honor posthumously. Murphy posthumously received his country's highest military honor, the Medal of Honor. Luttrell may have been the firefight's lone survivor, but he hardly emerged unscathed. He struggled with survivor's guilt, post-traumatic stress disorder and physical after-effects in the ensuing years. I died on that mountain, too, he said of his torment in a 2007 interview with NBC. I left a part of myself up there. Operation Red Wings Operation Red Wings was a counterinsurgent mission in the Kunar province of Afghanistan. Its objective was to disrupt local Taliban and anti-coalition militia activities. The mission involved four Navy SEALs from SEAL Team 10, Marcus Luttrell, Michael P. Murphy, Danny Dietz, and Matthew Axelson. The team's main goal was to capture or kill a high-value Taliban leader named Ahmad Shah. Decision to release the goat herders The SEALs encountered three goat herders, including a young boy, while on a reconnaissance mission. They faced a difficult ethical decision regarding whether to let them go or detain them, considering the potential risk of compromising the mission. Ultimately, the team decided to release the herders, adhering to rules of engagement and not wanting to harm civilians. Ambush by the Taliban Soon after releasing the goat herders, the SEAL team found themselves ambushed by a much larger Taliban force. The firefight was intense and the SEALs faced overwhelming odds. They fought bravely but were outnumbered and outgunned. 
losses and Marcus Luttrell's survival. The intense battle resulted in the deaths of three SEALs, Michael P. Murphy, Danny Dietz, and Matthew Axelson. Marcus Luttrell, though severely wounded, managed to evade capture and find refuge with the help of sympathetic villagers who shielded him from the pursuing Taliban. Rescue Operation A rescue mission, known as Operation Red Wings 2, was launched to recover Marcus Luttrell. It involved a U.S. Army Rangers team and other special operations forces. The rescue operation successfully evacuated Luttrell, and he received medical attention for his injuries. Aftermath Lone survivor details the physical and emotional challenges faced by Marcus Luttrell as he coped with the loss of his teammates and the trauma of the mission. The memoir highlights the camaraderie and brotherhood among Navy SEALs and pays tribute to the sacrifices made by those who serve in the military. Overall, Lone Survivor is a powerful and gripping account of the courage, resilience, and sacrifice demonstrated by Marcus Luttrell and his fellow SEALs in the face of adversity. The Lone Survivor, Marcus Luttrell Marcus Luttrell Born in 1975, grew up in Texas and joined the U.S. Navy in 1999. He went through the rigorous training to become a Navy SEAL. Luttrell's survival in the mountains of Afghanistan, despite serious injuries, showcases his determination and will to live. Medal of Honor for Michael P. Murphy Michael P. Murphy, one of the SEALs killed in the mission, was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions during the firefight. Murphy's heroic efforts to save his team members and his decision to expose himself to enemy fire to make a call for support contributed to his recognition. Book Reception and Impact Lone Survivor received widespread acclaim for its authenticity and gripping narrative. It became a bestseller and resonated with readers interested in military history and personal accounts of courage and survival. The book's success led to increased public awareness of the challenges faced by U.S. military personnel in Afghanistan. Film Adaptation The memoir was adapted into a film, also titled Lone Survivor, directed by Peter Berg and released in 2013. Mark Wahlberg portrayed Marcus Luttrell in the film. The adaptation received generally positive reviews for its realistic portrayal of the events and the performances of the cast. Criticism and Controversy While the book and the film gained widespread praise, some critics raised questions about the accuracy of certain details and the overall narrative. There were debates about the decision to release the goat herders and the actual number of Taliban fighters engaged in the battle. Marcus Luttrell's Later Career After the events described in Lone Survivor, Marcus Luttrell continued his military service and later retired from the Navy. He has since become an author, speaker, and advocate for veterans' issues. Luttrell co-authored other books, including Service, a Navy SEAL at War and Lone Survivor, the eyewitness account of Operation Red Wing and the Lost Heroes of SEAL Team 10. The story of Lone Survivor continues to be a significant and impactful narrative, offering insight into the challenges faced by military personnel in combat and the bonds formed among those who serve together in elite units like the Navy SEALs. Thanks for watching request you to subscribe the channel.